Hello, um, my name is Andreas Liebel. I'm the Managing Director of the Applied AI Initiative and the Applied AI Institute for Europe. Um, it's all about how can we advance in AI in Europe, how can we stay competitive from a global perspective. And one of the major topics there is the AI ecosystem, because especially in Europe, if we want to advance in AI, it's a joint effort. It's an, a thing that we all need to do together. And there are many different players um, that needs to contribute to that goal. And therefore, um, let's focus today on the topic of um, the AI ecosystems. As the um, Applied AI Institute for Europe, it's really about creating and publishing highest quality content for trustworthy AI in an open environment. Therefore, I'm really happy to be here today to talk about this topic. If we first of all talk about ecosystems, we need to understand what an ecosystem is, especially in that AI content. And if we put a company in, in the center as one example, you have different types of collaborations that come from that ecosystem. One is that you want to buy something. Uh, one is that you want to partner with someone to create something together. And one is to uh, find someone that helps you build a solution. And for all these different parts, you can find different uh, types of um, ecosystem players. So let's start maybe on the topic of partnering. There is obviously academia. And if we talk about academia in Europe, we actually have quite high and sophisticated AI research, lots of good talent. Um, and it's a very good and, and solid way to start working in AI in that way of collaborating um, with, with universities, with academic institutions. I would not focus today too much about that topic, but it's obviously a very important one. And then uh, another type of partnering, particularly important for um, AI in the AI context is data. So we need to partner most of our companies don't have sufficient data for AI application. So it's about how to identify the best ones um, to work with, to um, understand uh, and build AI models based on shared data. That's potentially one of the most complex topics because data is um, right uh, until now quite unclear how much value there is in data, what the licensing terms are. So um, it is a, a very important topic, but I would personally say still in its infancy, a very, very complex one if you really want to properly work and partner on data. So we also don't focus too much on that topic, but again, it's a very important one to think about in terms of ecosystems. And then um, it's about um, building um, AI, and there um, we uh, um, come to that topic of also startup ecosystems of really partnering institutions that help you to build um, an AI solution. On the other hand, um, uh, buying some AI solutions, buying AI competencies, and also their startups are very much in the focus of the collaboration with um, the ecosystem. And that um, is for today that, that main topic. So we talk about helping companies to build something, but also providing a solution that a company can buy. What we developed a couple of years ago, it's what we call the AI journey. And it's a very important concept to understand um, for um, startups, for entrepreneurs, for students, if um, there is a wish for collaboration with the industry. In the AI journey, you start at the very beginning as a organization that did not start at all with AI, and it's really about the basics. There is no value behind, but it's really about how can, can you start. And you will um, meet such companies. There are, I would say, the majority of companies at that stage. Um, and it's, it's a hard effort to really get them started on, on the AI journey. The next level is what we call the experimenter. Experimenter, it's about building prototypes, showcases, proof of concept, something that tells you, yes, AI can be applied in my company. That still doesn't create any value. It's just a showcase, but it's a very important step for understanding what is required, for understanding the mechanics behind AI, and start thinking about what it means to apply AI in the organization. Here, I would say it's the next highest um, bucket of, of companies, um, quite a few are at that stage, um, the experimenter stage. 
Then the next one is um, the practitioner stage. It's where I would say there are the more advanced companies are. It's about um, getting one or the other AI application into practice. Um, it, lots of organizational change, cultural change topics, and it starts to create value because you apply the AI solution already in a part. And then um, we come to the professional stage. That's where actually real value creation starts. It's about um, really using AI broadly in the organization in a reliable and a trusted way. And the final step is um, the shaper. It's really setting AI, putting AI at the center, at the core of the organization and transform whole industries with a very much AI first approach in the organization. So what we now do is to focus on the last parts. We help organizations to really get to these higher levels of maturity there where value creation is. And you can think of something like a transformational approach and on the other hand, a um, blue uh, or greenfield approach, really building AI um, startups, for example, from scratch with that AI first focus in mind. So in that whole ecosystem, you will meet companies at different stages of the AI journey. It's really important to understand where these organizations are. So many of uh, the startups met in the beginning, in the initial years, companies that were at the very beginning. And it was really a, an issue to, first of all, explain AI to convince companies about the value of AI. That changed a little bit in the uh, past couple of years. Um, it turned into building prototypes, building showcases. And there were several teams, several student teams, several startups that focused on that use case and showcase creation for, for organizations. That was, I would say, for many uh, countries in Europe, for many organizations since 2020, 2021, where it was all about understanding the potential of, of AI. And since then, it again changed and companies really focus on finding partners that help them to advance in AI to create value. The time is over for just showcases, for nice prototypes. It's really about value creation. And that, I think, is the most important topic to understand, that if we now talk about functioning ecosystems, the focus is not around playing anymore. It's about value creation. And what you need to do in that ecosystem is that you find a spot where you help create value. So if you look at a existing current startup landscape, um, you can um, find different categories, different players. We structure them into four main categories. Um, the AI ecosystem consists, first of all, of um, startups that really focus on enterprise function. It can be an HR startup, a finance startup, a marketing startup, and they really focus on that specific function, but are industry agnostic. So it can be applied in healthcare, in automotive, in pharma, in any other, comp uh, any other industry. That's one category. The other category is for enterprise intelligence. So you can think about um, data discovery, computer vision topics, computer audition topics, planning, forecasting. So you focus on that spe specific capability of an AI system and you then apply that capability to many of the problems in many of the industries. If, for example, you have a very good computer vision system and then you specify it for the specific use case. That's, I would say, mainly a, a consulting-based approach because you start with a good USP and then you um, interact with customers to find a good use case to work on. Then it's about um, the technology stack. So it's about the infrastructure, the um, data generation, the um, MLOps um, uh, frameworks, the, the data platforms or application platforms, model platforms, model libraries. Um, that is really about providing basic infrastructure for companies that want to advance on their AI journey. And the last one is startups that really focus on whole industry. So you are a medtech startup, you are a insurance startup that puts AI at the center of the organization and try to build that AI first one. Um, the goal is to either collaborate with existing players, getting bought by existing players, or actually overtake them and becoming market leaders in a specific niche that you are working in. 
So there are different types of um, uh, startups that uh, work together with organizations. And uh, from my perspective, what is really at the core right now, it's uh, that um, you are either an infrastructure startup that helps them to advance in this high levels of AI maturity. That means you need to be sufficiently large um, because large companies will not work with very small startups on a broad infrastructure topic. And on the other hand, it's about enterprise function. That's much more in that buying side from that first picture that I showed. It's about um, just getting a solution that works for a specific um, functional area in the company. And that is, I would say right now, the best way for organizations to work with industry partners because um, really introducing AI in the different um, functions of an organization is what, what really happens now. Industries is a little bit more complex. It needs to have quite a bit of, of venture capital. It needs to be quite a bit of, kind of time to create that. Um, and again, that enterprise intelligence time is a little bit over. It's not about creating prototypes anymore. It's about solutions that run for a long time. And that means it's much more a service business, a product business than a consulting business in the future. So that I hope gave you a little bit of an overview about what we think is the AI ecosystem, how these different players work together. And again, our goal is to really advance Europe, to keep Europe competitive. And it's all about the ecosystem that we have. So that was it from my side. Wish you a great day.